Hello folks, thank you for tuning in to Duckpin TV. I'm Brian Ewing. We're here today at Bowling Academy in East Providence, Rhode Island to bring you the 2014 Rhode Island Duckpin Bowlers Association Series Finals. This event is the culmination of the 2013-2014 Duckpin Bowling season in the state of Rhode Island. Over 100 bowlers qualified for this event. These bowlers participated in a qualifying round of five games. The top 24 bowlers advanced to the next round, which is match play. Bowlers bowled head-to-head -head in a double elimination format. And now we are down to the final three bowlers in this event. Josh Cullen is undefeated. He worked his way all the way through the winner's bracket and awaits the winner of the final match in the loser's bracket between Jimmy Mulvihill and Andy Fairlitz. Before this match, we had a chance to catch up with both of these bowlers. First, we'll hear from Andy, and then Jimmy. He is a good bowler. Uh, I've been waiting to bowl him for a while now, so only time will tell to see what happens. It looks pretty good right now. Now we welcome in the second member of our team, Eric Latesca. Uh, we just heard from both of the bowlers, and Jimmy seemed like a man of few words. Yeah, a few words, but but a lot of confidence. Uh, coming off of a really great performance uh, yesterday and, and followed up through today, top qualifier, Jimmy. Uh, 861, 777 scratch, really on fire, and then defeats um, Will Rigney decisively. You know, we know Will's a big shooter. 167, 118 scratch with handicap, 183, 134. Yeah, and his opponent, Andy Fairlett, it sounded like he's been waiting to bowl Jimmy Mulvihill competitively for quite some time. How did Andy get here today? Yeah, Andy, similar story, really uh, performed well yesterday, qualified uh, 755 scratch just underneath Jimmy, so it makes sense that he's got his sights set on him, uh, and then also defeats the number one bowler in the state of Connecticut, Kyle Shaw. He shoots a 137, 154 with handicap, beating uh, Kyle 126 scratch, 140 with handicap. Yeah, and this is about as good as you can get, folks. Jimmy Mulvihill versus Andy Fairlett. This match is actually currently in progress, and we join it in the fifth frame. Now, Andy has just completed his sixth frame. He has 78 through six frames, and leads Mulvihill by about 16 pins. Jimmy has 54 through five. Just one mark through those five frames, looking to turn things around here. Yeah, uncharacteristic. Um after after the performance yesterday and, and what he's done so far today, but that was a great ball. Let's see if he can get back on track here. Missed a single pin earlier this game in the fourth frame. Looking to turn that around and not make it a trend here. Uh, he just misses that one off to the left. The lane's a little bit too long. Yeah, Jimmy's showing a little bit of frustration there. You can see his arms going up at the ends of his approach. But of course, picks up the 10 there to put him at 64 in the sixth frame. And Andy now has a 14 pin lead. Yeah, Andy going to take the lane here. He himself not doing that great, uh, but, uh, but happy to have a lead with uh, 78 through 6. Yeah, Andy's picked up three spares through six frames so far. That's right about a 140 pace. See what he can do here. And he puts one on the uh, left side of the head pin there, a little bit light, leaves himself the 9-10. Yeah, Andy picked up a, a split earlier in this match. That was one of his spares in the fourth frame. We'll see if he can do something similar here. Certainly not an easy shot by any means. No, this one you got to slide right over. He almost did it. <laughs> <laughs> you see him. Hopping around there. Yeah, Andy's always a treat to watch on the lanes in a match like this. Very animated, as I'm sure our viewers at home know, having seen him featured in one of our doubles duels. Yeah, so the not the first time he's been under the Duckpin TV lights. Speaking of being under the lights, this is Jimmy Mulvihill's really first year as a competitive bowler in tournaments. Yeah, and he's just burst out of the scenes. It's... Uh... Re really impressive year, um, average 139, and uh, has has really great performance out on the pro tour. And wow, 
Yeah, there's a strike for you. This is the, the class he's been showing throughout the year. We'll take another look at that strike here. Just textbook there, Eric. Yeah, right in that 1-3 pocket. If he could throw every ball right there, he'd throw a 300 game. He'd be the first one. Yeah. As we always say, certainly capable, but all it takes is that one little mistake to mess up your 300. But back to this match here, and Mulvihill looking to make up that 14-pin difference of the sixth frame. Andy looking to hit back here in the eighth. Oh, and another light hit in that 1-2 pocket. This time, instead of the 9-10, it's the 5-10. Yeah, this one a little bit more makeable. The 5-pin slightly in front of the 10-pin here, so a little easier to slide over. And Andy's ball comes in from the, from the left side. He's probably very comfortable shooting at this. Ooh. Just barely misses it. Yeah, you can see Andy here, just by his body language. Showing just a slight bit of frustration here. You know, he's thrown a couple of good balls the last couple of frames, and he's come out with uh, two nine boxes. Yeah, and you, and he knows uh, he has a, a marginal advantage here, but uh, Jimmy's filling a strike, and uh, doubles happen, and doubles happen quickly. Yeah, this this is probably going to be a, a big moment in the match here. Uh, if Jimmy doubles here, turns the match around, he takes the lead. See what happens. Oh. Wow. Jimmy Mulvihill takes advantage here. A little bit of a heavy hit, but he gets that 7 8 to go down. And you see the excitement there. He knows how big of a moment that was. Yeah. Andy here. The goal is going to be not to press. Just keep throwing the same ball he's throwing, even though he's in a different situation in this match. He's likely down. Yeah, this is this is the moment where you answer. It's almost the same ball we've seen three times in a row here. This one, the most makeable of the three, he's looking at the three ten. He can catch it on either catch that three pin on either side and uh, and carry the ten for a spare. It's gonna be a big moment here for Andy. And he picks it up. So we have a match here, folks. Yes, we do. And Jimmy, another big ball here, uh, just as big, if not bigger, than the last one. Yeah. So, currently has 94 in the eighth frame, but he still has a ball to fill in the seventh and two in the eighth. So, with a good first ball here, you can take a pretty sizable lead. And you could feel him take that extra moment to uh, to take a breath. And it uh, looked like he dropped his shoulder a little bit there, was off balance when he delivered the ball. And managed to hit the head pin, but light, and then you see the consequence. He only gets six out of it. This four-pinner, though, is still a very makeable shot. He hit it in that little pocket. Jimmy, I think, notices the, the moment here, taking a little extra time. Oh, and he shoots it really well. Just a little heavy on that two pin. Gets two out of it. He's going to have to clean up the uh, four seven here for a ten. And he does just that. And with that ten, that gives Jimmy 118 in the ninth frame. Andy has 106 in the ninth, plus one ball to fill on his spare. So he's not going to be able to catch Jimmy in the ninth frame, but uh, he can certainly put a mark up there and put some pressure on him. And that's the mindset you have to have here. Andy going first, Jimmy finishing second. You're the first bowler, you at least want to put the pressure on that second guy and make him mark in the tenth frame. Oh, and your the bowler's worst nightmare in the tenth frame when you need something. Right through the middle, he's looking at six pins. Yeah, doesn't get the fill there, and also doesn't leave a very makeable break. I should say it's a duck pin bowler's worst nightmare, not a bowler's worst nightmare. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> it's 
So Andy, you're gonna likely have to pick this up to have a shot at the match. Oh, and he took another great shot at it. He's almost made every every split he's looked at this game. He's gonna have to settle for a ten and at best a 120 game. Yeah, that's a 120 for Andy Fearlett. So that means Jimmy Mulvihill will win this match with a four here. If we factor in the one pin of handicap Andy will be receiving in this match. I put my money on Jimmy. Right. Uh, I'd say that was a pretty safe bet, Eric. But Jimmy, of course, would like to end this match well as he'll be taking on Josh Cullen, and that's how you want to do it. Yeah, a positive um, note there. He'll carry some momentum into his next yeah. match against the one person that's defeated him so far today. Yeah. And you saw him there just lift up his shirt a little bit to step aside on bowling. A uh, little message there to Andy? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe just showboating a little. <laughs> I think he's earned it, though. Absolutely, with the way he's bowled this weekend. Oh, another really great ball. Ringing 10 pin there. And as we get ready to wrap up this match, which I'd say a, a great weekend for Andy Fairlight. Yeah. You know, second qualifier, made it all the way to the final three, and lost to the number one qualifier here and a really great bowler, Jimmy Mulvihill. Yeah, the, the run continues for Jimmy and, and Andy. Yeah, you got to tip your hat to the guy. Uh, great bowling, and even this, this game here, uh, four consecutive splits in the last uh, the last four frames. Not a whole lot you can do about that. Yeah. So it's 138 Mobile Hill, defeating Fairlet, 121. Boy, Eric, that was a really exciting match here between two of the best bowlers in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, this is usually the time we would take folks to cut into a commercial break. But today, we'd like to thank all of you watching who have donated some of your money to Duckpin TV so we can bring you events like the Rhode Island Series Finals. But we haven't managed to raise all of the funds that we need to acquire the equipment that we, we need to create professional broadcasts and continue this operation. So if you can, go over to our Facebook page and check us out at facebook.com slash Duckpin TV or on the web at www.duckpintv.webs.com. You can always check us out on Twitter as well at duckpintv or send us an email, duckpintv at gmail.com. As you can see, we have a pretty strong presence online. Check us out on one of those platforms. Click on the donate button or send us a message and help fund us so we can bring you more programs like this. Now, Eric, as the bowlers get ready for the next match here, in a couple minutes to prepare, tell us a little bit about how Josh Cullen made it to the final match today. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing, Brian. Josh, these three bowlers that we're presenting in the program, uh, Jimmy, Andy, and Josh, they are our top three qualifiers yesterday. Uh, Josh shot uh, 677, 833 with handicap. And then Josh is the only person who went through this morning undefeated, got himself the bye to the final, and is the one person who's defeated uh, the person who just advanced to this match, Jimmy Mulvihill. So uh, we've got a, a really great match set up for us here. It's the rematch between these two, sort of the rubber match, and uh, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Jimmy Mulvihill has that last match, his loss, his only loss, in the back of his mind here as he gets ready for this big championship match. Just a note here before we hear from the bowlers. Because this is double elimination, Jimmy Mulvihill will have to defeat Josh Collin twice in order to earn the championship, whereas Josh only needs to win one match to give Jimmy his two losses and knock him out of the tournament. Yeah, Jimmy's got his work cut out for him. So we've just had a chance to chat with both of these bowlers. First, we'll hear from Jimmy Mulvihill and how he feels after his last match, and then we'll hear from Josh Collin. We've been waiting in the wings. Throw the ball good. A couple bad breaks here and there. Made, made a few of them. He's my next opponent. My only loss. It'll be a tough one. I get him twice. It was good and bad. Uh, good in a way. I had to bowl less games, but just waiting to bowl, getting anxious. Uh, it's all 
All good fun. So oh, Jimmy Mulvihill. How do you feel about that? Um, Can you beat him? I beat him once. Um, that's how I got my advance to the final round. Um, we're both undefeated going into that game. Hopefully I can stay hot and beat him again. So Eric, we just heard from Josh Cullen last here. And he's been sitting for quite a while as the last match was underway. But he said he's still hot. Yeah, he might be the exact opposite of hot at this point. Uh, sitting for a half an hour, that uh, that can definitely build up some tension, some nerves. you got to figure out how to manage your uh, your own mindset through through that time. And then we've seen him warming up, right, throwing balls. That's the other thing you got to do. you got to try to keep up. Uh, uh, stay loose, keep your body loose, and uh, try not to t let the muscles tighten up, which will have a tendency to do if you pull uh, several games and then take a break. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like the bowlers have just completed their warm-ups, and we are ready to go. Josh Cullen has elected to go first to begin this championship round. Bowlers shake hands, a couple of gentlemen, as we all are in duck and bowling. Josh Collin will look to get off to a good start here. And that he does. Throws a great ball. 1-3 pocket, a little light, but uh, leaves himself the 4-7. Yeah, nice makeable two-pinner here. A little off the mark there. Maybe just a, a little bit of nerves coming into play here. This is a, a championship round. Yeah, he's going to want to shake those off as quick as he can. And starts with a 10. You see him showing his emotions there, uh, trying to keep himself calm. Almost looked like he was telling himself to uh, slow down a little bit. Uh, may have rushed that second ball a little bit. Jimmy's going to look to get the jump on Josh after missing that two-pinner for spare break. A little light there, but this looks like a makeable split. Uh, before we get too far into the match, let's talk about Josh's decision to go first. He's the higher seed, so he chose to make Jimmy bowl second, and subsequently, as Jimmy picks up the spare here, Jimmy will bowl last in the tenth frame. Why would a number one seed do that? Well, it's uh, it's really just a matter of preference. Some some bowlers really prefer the uh, the pressure situation. If uh, when it comes down to it, having that opportunity to know exactly what they need to win a match if it's close, uh, some people embrace that. Others others would prefer to be the ones putting the pressure on the other bowlers. Josh would be of the uh, uh, of the latter group there. He's gonna make a. A jump back here after missing that uh, spare in the opening frame. Leaves himself a spare break. One, two, four. So he's just taking a deep breath there before this ball. Oh. You hear the crowd react to that one. That's uh, a well shot. And Josh, the despair. Uh, it was a uh, great shot there. Hits it a little heavy on the head pin, but just uh, deserving of the spare and didn't, and didn't get it. So with the 9 there, Josh brings his score to 19 in the second frame, and we should mention that Josh will be receiving 15 pins handicap in this match. Yeah, and uh, for the viewers out there who may think that that's unfair, uh, Jimmy Mulvihill, a higher averager than, than Josh through the season, um, the handicap effectively levels the playing field between these two bowlers. Just like in golf, Jimmy up in his second frame. Great takes ball. a commanding start here. Yeah, we'll watch that one up. again. Let's see his reaction here. He he likes that ball, and he should. Cause yeah. he can't get much better than that. Yeah, that 15 pins is disappearing quickly. Let's see if Josh can answer back here. Good ball. Oh my goodness. But not the desired result there. Yeah, four, seven, eight, ten. That ball was right in the joint. And for Josh, you know, considering that three pinner he just nearly missed in the last frame, you have to feel a little unlucky at the moment. Yeah, unlucky, but uh, you can't feel hopeless. Still a lot of game to go here. 
Very good point. Josh looking to pick up the 10. And he does, so that'll give him 29 through 3 frames. Certainly not the worst start. No. Um, only dropped one pin. Could be in a worse situation. And really, in reality, he's only thrown one bad ball that I've seen uh, missing that two pinner. Jimmy now here up in the third frame, looking to keep his hot streak going, and from another mark could take a very commanding lead in this match. Throws another great ball. Oh, he's wait this one out. He's looking at the six pin, nine fill on that strike so far. Picking this up, he, uh, he gives him a 21 pin advantage uh, scratch and uh, six pins with the hand handicap. This re Jimmy looks like he's going to be very, very tough to beat. He's on the money. And with that spare, Jimmy moves himself up to 40 in the second frame. With that spare, he'll be at 50 or more in the third. Shooting for maybe a personal high game here. This high game previously was 224. That was just recently this summer, in July. Josh, up now in the fourth. Looking to join the match, get on the board. And that's not the way you're going to do it here. Still a makeable leave, but this one will not be easy. Yeah, a little uh, four-pinner, one, three, nine, ten. He's looking to hit this one most likely on the right side of that head pin. See if he can get the ball to carry him over into the ten. Oh. oh. Perfectly shot. Very nice, and that gets him going in this match. Very nice shot. Textbook. Yeah. Surprising, he got a, he, he left that nine pin standing and needed the the, pin, the three pin to carry him off the wall and, and carry it, but uh, still shot perfectly as far as I'm concerned. Jimmy up now, filling a spare. Oh, another great ball from That's Jimmy. Six pin again. Can't get that thing to fall, but he'll take the nine drop. Jam that one in the one-two pocket. And the Reina Mass native picks up the spare. That's four marks in a row now to begin this championship round match. He is firmly in control of this match. Josh is going to do what he can to wrestle it out of Jimmy's hands. But it's going to take a lot of work. There's only six frames left to do it in. And again, a little off balance. You see him popping up at the end of that when he's delivering the ball. Crosses himself over and hits that two pin. A couple of times now he's been left to the head pin on the first ball. He's going to need to make uh, an adjustment. Another four pin spare there for Josh Cullen. 45 now through four, the spare in the fifth. If only Jimmy wasn't knocking down nine and then getting the spare. Six in a spare would, would be enough, but uh, he's gonna have to do better than that. Yeah, if you're Josh right now, you probably don't wanna even be looking at the scoreboard. Uh, just focusing on your bowling would be the best thing to do. But if you're Jimmy, take a look at that scoreboard, give you a little bit of extra confidence going into this fifth frame. That's right. But at the same time, you, you've got to manage yourself and stay in the match and try not to step out of the moment in the process. Jimmy certainly has his game face on. Heavy hit there. It's a split. Another great ball crosses over that headpin. He's done that three frames in a row. A little heavier this time. Unlucky break. He's going to have a, a tough shot here to cover the uh, three, four, seven. Looks like he's just waiting for a ball to get back here. While we have the time, we just mentioned that Jimmy is a quality control specialist. Yeah, J both our competitors today uh, in this match, technical high school graduates. Universal Tech for Josh Cullen, Bristol Plymouth for Jimmy, who almost <laughs> manages to slide that three pin over into the, the two in the back. Heard it from the crowd there, almost amazement that he didn't make the shot. It was yeah. that close. And then does the wise thing and goes and gets the two pins instead of shooting the one. 
So that's 85 through 5 frames for Jimmy Mulvihill. That's right where he wants to be in this match. Four marks, five frames. And if you're Josh, this is that moment, uh, the, the first opening you've seen in this match. Uh, you're going to want to capture this one and put the ball right on the head. Pin. Chance to make up some pins here. And that's what you want to do if you're Josh Collins. Strike in the sixth. Makes up 10 pins in the fifth frame. Ball very similar to the one that Jimmy's throwing where he crosses over the head pin. You see this thing get right in there. One pin carries the five and nine last. Didn't even need any pin action off the wall there. Got them all to tumble over. There he is getting himself a little pumped up. Jimmy looking to bounce back here after that split in the fifth. Another one all over that one-two pocket. Gets a little unlucky again here. No action off the wall to carry either the five oh. or the ten, but she saw that pin sneak behind the ten. Yeah, the sport needs to be a millimeter or two off. That can make a big difference in the, the pin action coming off the wall. Well, we've seen him cross over the head pin. If he can cross over that five pin, it's just how he wants to shoot it. Oh, you can tell right from when he released that ball, Eric. Uh, off balance, spinning itself around, certainly wasn't going to make it that way. Try to get to nine here. Oh, and he gets to ten. Jeez. That's the one. That would have had it, there, as they say. <laughs> so that brings Mulvihill to 95 in the sixth. And Josh on a strike here, looking to make up some more pins. He's down about 20 at the moment, but like you said, it's 15 pins handicapped. So effectively, down five with a strike to fill. All you gotta do here is one ball at a time, hit the head pin, go from there. A little off the mark. Maybe trying to make an adjustment here. Was missing to the left of the head pin quite a few times earlier in the match. This is to the right this time. See if he can zone in on that pocket for the second ball. Takes a great shot on it. It's a uh, low percentage on the outside. Usually something like that happens, but he's puts nine on the strike uh, and really closing the gap now. Yeah, most importantly here with this 10 box, he turns it around and look, what looked like a, an insurmountable lead from Jimmy Mulvihill turns into a four pin advantage for Josh Cullen here with handicap. Yeah, the shoe is on the other foot now. Jimmy looking to get things going here again, coming off two splits in the fifth and sixth frames. Oh, and there's uh, it's really just another great yeah. ball. You can see his disgust at that ball. It's the tragedy of duck pin bowling. Yeah. You can throw what seems like a perfect ball and chop right through that pocket and that head pin. Yeah, and it, uh, it, sometimes that can turn itself into a really terrible box. you got to keep your uh, wits, ab wits about you and make sure you're hitting those object pins on the two following balls to get as much wood as you can. Yeah, still four pins up here for Jimmy on the third ball. It's barely seen that today from Jimmy. Yeah. But he's able to pick up the nine, brings him to 104. And now, like we said, Josh Cullen, five pin lead here going into the eighth frame. I think the nerves have been shaken off here. We're going to see some confidence from Josh for the rest of the match. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer to the pocket here, Eric. Uh, that but you can see a, much, a little light. much more solid delivery. He's able to uh, stand there and really stable after he threw the ball. He's getting closer for sure. Picks up that spare here on the outside. Shows some emotion there. Yeah, a little bit of excitement. <laughs> some laughter. <laughs> yeah, hit the one on the outside. A little baby split there. Nice pickup for Josh. And 
putting a little bit of pressure here on Mulvihill. Josh up five with a mark in the eighth. Uh, Jimmy's got to match him here to, to keep that just five pin disadvantage. Ooh. Excellent ball there. Another Mulvihill. great ball, and uh, the same ball is going to cover it. So always, uh, always nice to see the five pin. Yeah, and this is his first spare leave in four frames. His three previous frames he left splits. So he'll be itching to pick up this spare. And that he Josh. does. And so Josh three. puts the pressure on and Jimmy responds right back. Yeah, and we have, we have quite the match here, folks. 94 to 104 in the seventh. Both bowlers have spares in the eighth. Josh with that 50 pins handicap has a five pin lead. Two frames to go. Now gets back on the other side of the head pin, hits light, gets the gets the break. Looking at three pins here, the three, five, six. Yeah, Josh has been a little bit erratic here, coming to the left and to the right of the head pin. But most importantly, he's been on the head pin here in the past couple of frames. And you're on the head pin. Be successful. Yeah, it seems like he uh, sorts it all out for a second ball. And it's uh, the game where the first ball does matter, but the second ball matters just as much. And seven fill spare there. Maintains his lead. At but least here's, for now. here's Jimmy's opportunity to make some ground up. He's down five pins. Uh, anything over seven here, and he's gaining ground on Josh. So he's going to want to. He's going to look to hit the head pin here. Uh, it's very squarely critical. He gets a mark here. See what he can do. Right on time for Mulva Hill. And that is precisely the ball that he needed. See him deliver this one really nicely. And he's really excited about it too. He knows that's what he needed in that frame. And His signature gesture there. <laughs> Cullen off. So he makes up the three pins, Jimmy. So Cullen has a two pin lead here. Both bowlers have marks in the ninth frame. And Cullen saves the best ball he's thrown in the match for the tenth frame. You can't ask for anything better. Now if Cullen can pick up the spare and put a mark on it, he's going to force Mulvihill to at least mark in the tenth to make this into a match. Dead on. He breathed a sigh of relief there. He knew that was a really important ball. And now it's all about getting as many sticks as you can here, putting as much pressure on uh, Jimmy as possible because Jimmy is filling the strike. <laughs> as we say in Duck and Bowling, Eric, that's where you want to. Leave the 710 in that 10th right. frame on the spare where you don't have to shoot it afterwards. That's right. Really, another great ball. He saved saved his best box for last, I would say, Brian. There's a, uh, the, that said, Jimmy takes, takes the lane here with uh, an opportunity to, without having to throw the double, to throw a spare and put 10 on it to win by a pin. And I won't be missing a ball and get it back. So, <laughs> it cannot get much better than this here on Duckpin TV. Rhode Island Series Finals, Championship Round. Mova Hill needs to win this match to stay alive. Oh, another great ball from Jimmy in that 1-3 pocket. A little heavy. He's going to have to cover the 2-7. Almost looked in danger there for just a split second of leaving a split, but a more challenging a much, split, a much worse than, split than what he's left. Uh, but needs to pick up this spare to have a shot at this match and stay alive. Oh, Picks and it talk up. about responding to the pressure with everything on the line there. Jimmy covers the little split. It's not easy to make, folks. There's a lot of ways. There's a lot more ways to miss that than there are to make them. So let's set this up here for you, folks. Josh Cullen, 148 scratch, 
He's completed his game. He's 163 with his 15 pins handicap. Mulvihill needs to beat that 163 to win this match. So that means putting a strike on this. Nine pins will tie. Eight pins or less. He's eliminated the Collins champion. Oh, oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Mulvihill throws another great ball on the head pin. Leaves a ring in five pin. And we have a tie. Boy, you can't quite write a script like this, right? Championship round of the Rhode Island Series Finals. The biggest match of the year in Rhode Island. Yeah, it's and all culminated to this point. I mean, 15 tournaments, uh, qualifying yesterday, match play today, uh, and you've got a tie. You can't ask for anything better. Yeah, and, and talk about dramatic, Eric. Colin starts out the match pretty shaky through three frames. He doesn't mark. Whereas on the other hand, Mobile Hill opens with four marks in a row. Looks unbeatable. Yeah, I mean, you can just imagine Josh... Uh, at some point must have felt out of that match. Uh, and then Jimmy gets a little bit uh, unlucky, hits, stays on the head pin through the match. He really didn't miss much and uh, gets some unlucky breaks. Meanwhile, Josh uh, starts his trend upward, uh, gets a couple lucky breaks and makes some good spares. His second ball was on the whole match. You can't deny that. Absolutely. And we will have a winner of this match, folks. As per tie-breaking procedures in the RIDBA, we will have a two-frame roll-off. And Josh will get us started here. Oh, and that's the way you want to start a roll-off. Oh, man, carries that momentum from the end of the last game right into the roll-off. Now, Josh, uh, we'll watch this replay here. This was quite a ball. Textbook. See the emotion there. He knows two frames. If he wins this, he's the champion. That's right. He is pumped up. And look, and it, look, he wanted to go again in his second box. He yes. picked up his, his other ball yeah. and almost wanted to go again. Jimmy's going to try to answer this back here. Feeling some pressure. That uh, a choice by Josh to go first seems like it's paying off right now. This is a moment I, I think of another sport, uh, tennis, where you can get to the end of a long set and you can be in the middle of a tie break. You realize, uh, I played this whole set. 6-6, six, six, and uh, if I win the tie break, I go up a set. If I lose it, I start from scratch again. That's ex I bet that's exactly that's what's going through both of these guys' mind. Oh! Just narrowly picks up that two-pitter. And maybe for Jimmy, he's actually thinking uh, my tournament's at stake here. J uh, Josh, on the other hand, is, uh, is probably thinking more like a tennis player. <laughs> Yeah, Eric, you know, some people say they'd rather shoot a two-pinner because it's more more to shoot at, right, rather than a single-pinner. But Well, you saw the reason right there why that's probably uh, not true. If you've got two pins, that means you've got one extra one to miss. Yeah, absolutely. That's a perfect example there. Josh on strike. Oh, and not what he was looking for there. On the head pin, but a little bit light. With Jimmy on uh, spare himself, uh, Josh is going to be looking to pick up some more pins here. I should mention that Josh gets three pins handicapped in this roll off. Oh, shoots it really well, but with those three pins, he forces Jimmy to throw a spare. Another mark. That could be an important pin there for Josh. He leaves one on the deck for a nine. That gives him 28 through his two frames. With handicap, that's 31. Jimmy is going to need a mark of any kind. thought it couldn't get more exciting than the end of the last match, but oh man. We have extra frames here. I can't take it. I can't take it. Roll the hill. For Mark. And a very makeable two-pinner. If you're Josh Cullen, 
you are closing your eyes and saying a prayer. Alright, so Holy Hope picks this up. That hope will give him 28, and he'll need to put four pins on the mark. But like we saw in the last frame, two pinners are not easy. Oh! You could hear the shout of frustration right out of his hands. Jimmy knew that was going wide of the mark. But we have a champion, folks. Josh Collin, the 2014 Rhode Island Duck Pin Bullers Association Series Finals Champion. Hope you can fit that whole title on a plaque for him. Yeah, a, a great, uh, a great match here. I can't, uh, I can't say enough. I mean, Josh, Josh's perseverance, and uh, Jimmy really had, had not missed almost the entire match. Uh, that, that really was the first time he was off the mark. Congratulations to Josh Cullen, ladies and gentlemen, and to Jimmy Mul Mulvihill. A second place finish, uh, a long, grueling tournament. Uh, congratulations to both these guys. So, Brian, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you rate that match? <laughs> that match was a strike, Eric. That, this one was off the charts. <laughs> I mean, you, you come down to the 10th frame in the regular match. Mulvihill gets up. He needs a mark, gets it. Then he needs to put a strike on it. That final ball, he needs a strike to win. Be like a walk off in baseball. He gets that strike, he keeps the championship going. It's a nine, we're tied, eight or less, and he's lost it. Of course, he gets the nine, so we're tied, go to extra frames, and the Bullers didn't disappoint here. Yeah, right? it was just like a repeat of the last two frames of the, of the match itself, it stayed yeah. close. They both start out with marks, and comes down to the, almost the final ball for Jimmy again and very uncharacteristically misses that two-pinner, and Josh wins the roll-off by just three pins. Uh, you know, Colin seems to have Mulva Hill's number. He, he beat the number one qualifier twice to win the championship. That's right. Not, not easily. Uh, both very difficult, arduous matches, and, uh, and that's right, 2-0 uh, and o for Colin uh, versus Mulva Hill. Yeah, and we just caught up with Josh Cullen and got his thoughts after he won. 2014 series finals. Here's what he had to say. Come a long way from the beginning. There was only two of us that bowled all the uh, tournament series stops, and I was one of them. So to, to win it was really a great achievement for me. Two frames, I'm thinking, you know, be calm, try not to do anything, you know, out of the ordinary. But when it came down to that, when he tied, you know, with the box before I had left a 710, and I, you know, I missed it, you know, one pin, I wouldn't have had to, you know, to roll it off, but it definitely uh, made it very interesting. So certainly a well-deserved victory here for Josh Cullen at the 2014 Rhode Island Duck Pin Bowlers Association Series Finals. Thank you for tuning in, folks, and please stay tuned to Duckman TV and share the excitement of events like this with your friends. And let us know what you think. You can reach us at www.facebook.com backslash DuckpinTV, or you can reach us on uh, Twitter at uh, DuckpinTV. And, of course, stay tuned to our YouTube channel. We have plenty more exciting Duckpin content coming your way.